Fire results from a combination of heat, oxygen and fuel. These three elements form the fire triangle. We can use different firefighting suppression techniques to break the triangle, such as removing the fuel, cooling the fuel and smothering the fuel. Dry firefighting breaks the triangle by removing the fuel source. Water, on the other hand, breaks the triangle by wetting and cooling the burning fuels. The fuel is cooled to the point where there is insufficient heat to start burning. Any steam produced displaces the oxygen necessary for combustion. Modern firefighting techniques also use Class A foams and fire retardant to extend the fire suppression capabilities of water. These additives keep more of the water in contact with the fuel. Whether we use foam, fire retardant or water alone is dependent on fire behaviour, fuel type, terrain and the stage the fire has reached. With any of these techniques, use safe work practices, wear protective clothing and observe the safety watchouts. The sources of water may be rivers, creeks, fixed tanks, reservoirs, lakes, the sea, dams and wells or bores. Floating collar tanks can also be used to store water at more convenient locations. High volume pumps and hoses reduce fill times and make the source more accessible. Relay tanks are also used to take water to where it is needed. Now the quick fill, we have a, a variety of options. Everyone on the fire line should be made aware of the location of the water source, access and the escape routes at the crew briefing. What's it down from regular camp basically? Yeah. We've also got a very good dam up here at Bambara. The most effective water source is close to the fire to minimise turnaround times between the refilling of firefighting vehicles. Relatively clean that is, not sandy, muddy or too shallow. Safe to access during the fire. And there should be a sign, a defined track, a turnaround point and a level spot for refilling firefighting vehicles close to the water. A quick fill pump is the most common method used to fill firefighting vehicles at the water source. The pump is prepared, the suction hose and delivery hose set up so that vehicles can be filled and returned to the fire line in the shortest possible time. A floating collar tank may be set up if water flow is insufficient, access difficult or to protect areas around the water source. These portable tanks store water at more convenient locations and reduce the disturbance to rivers and streams. To access water from the mains in urban areas, tankers carry hydrants. They can also access water from standpipes. Firefighters can also directly connect a hose to the hydrant to fight the fire. In summary, know the location of the water source closest to the fire line. Use a clean water source. Set up quick fill pumps to speed up refilling of firefighting vehicles set up a floating collar tank to make water more accessible. Tankers or slip-ons carry the water to the fire line. Different types of hoses deliver the water to the nozzle and various nozzle types allow us to alter the spray pattern. Hoses are a flexible means of getting the water from the source to the fire. Increasing the length of the hose increases the friction. 
which reduces the pressure at the nozzle. To overcome this, either increase the pressure delivered by the pump, insert a relay pump, or make the water available closer to the fire. Three types of hose are used on the fire line. High pressure rubber hose, lay flat delivery hose, and rigid suction hose. Rubber hose is normally used directly from a vehicle as a work hose because it's strong and flexible. It can be handled by one person in dense and rough terrain. Because it's on a live reel, rubber hose is easy to roll out and retrieve. Lay flat hose is used when you need to move large amounts of water over a long distance. It's generally used as the delivery line with a rubber hose attached to the end to make it easier to manoeuvre on the fire line. Lay flat hose, when charged with water, is heavy and awkward to move. Two people are required to work on the nozzle. Avoid kinking the hose and don't drag it over hot coals or sharp objects. Suction hoses come in two sizes and are connected to quick fill pumps or the external suction inlet port of tankers or slip-ons. The seals should be clean and airtight. The strainer must be completely underwater and kept off the bottom. As water in a hose is often under high pressure, it can be dangerous. Always point the hose towards the ground before activating it. Water under pressure can snap tree limbs, so don't stand directly under the tree when using high pressure hose. A pump operator, by changing the engine revs, can alter the pressure and volume of water delivered to the hose. The pump speed can be reduced to conserve water. The operator should also check water reserves at the tank or at the fixed water point regularly. When pumping water uphill from a tanker, the back pressure prevents the delivery hose from being uncoupled after the job is complete. This problem can be prevented by connecting a three-way valve to the delivery side with a short length of lay-flat hose. Opening this valve before disconnecting the delivery hose releases the pressure buildup. Choose the right nozzle and the right spray pattern to put out the fire. With the correct combination, not only will you deal with the fire quicker, you will also save water. Fog nozzles. Dialer jet, director and foam nozzles are the common nozzle types used on the fire line. Two new nozzles, the Protec and Scotty foam branch, are available for use on the tanker. Fog nozzles come in two sizes that are matched to the pump. Fog nozzles adjust to produce either a jet stream, spray stream or fog pattern. Fog nozzles deliver high volumes of water so they are used for a fast knockdown and hard to get at fire spots. Fog nozzles also create a water droplet shield against radiant heat. The dialer jet is a versatile nozzle. It has five options from spray to jet to fog. A dialer jet uses less water than a fog nozzle or a director and has a narrower spray pattern. A director is a specialised nozzle used to send a jet of water long distances. It produces a jet stream that suits a fast knockdown of a burning edge. The Protec nozzle offers variable spray patterns from jet to spray to fog. It has an easy to use on off lever and allows the operator to vary the flow rate at the nozzle. The CAFS nozzle is used to deliver foam when connected to a compressed air foam system or CAFS unit on a slip-on. Other foam nozzles such as the Blizzard Boss and Bubble Boss are aspirated nozzles. Aspirated nozzles introduce air into the system without the use of a compressor. These nozzles are used on conventional slip-on units and older model tankers. 
The Scotty Foam Branch replaces the Blizzard Boss for use on tankers built after 2000. Select either fluid or wet foam by rotating the branch head. The type of water spray can be varied to suit the fire behaviour. The jet stream pattern produces a lot of water, has a long reach and greater penetration. A jet stream pattern is not affected as much by wind and radiant heat, so it is used for a fast knockdown. However, it may cause damage if misused. The jet stream conducts electricity and it is easy to waste water. The spray pattern stream breaks water into small droplets, which increases the cooling effect of the water. A spray pattern covers a larger area, uses less water than a jet stream and is ideal for blacking out. But it has a shorter reach and less penetration and it will not cool hot spots unless applied directly for a longer period. A fog pattern is an extremely fine curtain of spray, which has a high cooling effect. It can be used for protection in a burnover situation. A fog pattern has a shorter reach, will only cool objects when applied directly to them, and is subject to wind drift. In summary, recognize the different types of hose and use the correct hose for the job. The pump operator should monitor water levels and alter the delivery of water as requested. For safety, always point the nozzle at the ground. Use the correct nozzle and spray pattern. Water tends to run off fuel and when in contact with the fuel it remains as droplets due to surface tension. Additives such as fire retardants and foam extend the wetting capability of water and form a barrier against the flames. A fire retardant is a chemical substance applied on or ahead of a fire front. It coats the fuel, reducing the flammability of the fuel and slows combustion. The chemical forms a red slurry when mixed with water. Fixed wing fire bombing aircraft generally deliver the fire retardant slurry. Foam also contains a wetting agent that increases the effectiveness of the water to wet the fuel and to absorb heat. Introducing air into a mixture of water and foam concentrate makes the foam. Class A foams are used to fight forest fires and grass fires. It can also be used on wood, paper, rubber and plastic. Class A foam is biodegradable, so it has minimal long-term environmental impact. However, foam concentrate can be toxic to some aquatic life. If a spillage of foam concentrate does occur, do not apply water to the concentrate as this will cause excessive foaming. Use absorbent material, such as earth or sawdust, to contain and soak up the spill. As a further precaution, avoid using foam solution close to rivers and streams. Foam concentrate is described as a moderate irritant and foam solution as a low irritant. However, some people may be more susceptible than others. When handling foam concentrate, wear goggles and gloves, along with clothing buttoned to the wrist. Do not inhale the fumes from foam concentrate. If splashing to the eyes occur, flush with clean water or the eye wash supplied in a safety kit. In summary, Additives extend the extinguishing capability of water. Foam and retardant form a barrier against the flames. Fire retardant coats the fuel and slows combustion. Foam creates bubbles, which releases the moisture slowly, absorbs heat and slows combustion. 
Avoid using foam or retardant close to rivers or streams. Wear safety equipment and take care when handling foam or retardant. On the fire line, we use water to attack the fire directly. Assist with dry fire.